on Impossible Engineering. The Airbus A380, the largest passenger plane on the planet. When you see that huge monster, impossible that this big thing is gonna fly. No way. It took cutting edge aerospace engineering. A massive fly-by-wire system like this is an incredible tool of safety for the aircraft itself. And a revolutionary design. Without those design features, this aircraft wouldn't exist today. To make the impossible possible. Since the birth of aviation over a century ago, air travel has been growing exponentially across the globe. Over three billion people fly each year. That's half the world's population. The challenge for today's aerospace engineers is to find a way to keep up with the constantly growing demand and design aircraft that can accommodate as many passengers as possible. 15, 20, 30 years ago, the challenge in the aeronautical field was mainly speed. Then the new objective of Airbus, Boeing, for example, was the size of the aircraft. In order to reduce the 100,000 flights that take place each day, aircraft designers would need to think big. What they came up with? Smashed aviation records. The Airbus A380, an ultra high capacity airliner, the largest passenger plane on the planet. An aircraft so big that a giant building had to be constructed just to accommodate it. We built that brand new hangar to welcome that huge uh, monster, that huge aircraft, so big that our hangars couldn't fit that kind of aircraft. This revolutionary double-decker plane has an almost 265-foot wingspan, the largest of any commercial aircraft. It has almost 6,000 square feet of usable floor space. That's 40% more than the next largest airliner. It can carry up to 850 passengers. And with its state-of-the-art jet engines and cutting-edge design, it can fly non-stop almost halfway around the world. At a custom-built hangar in Paris, this Airbus A380 is being stripped down as part of its scheduled four-year service, revealing the secrets behind this incredible feat of engineering. For maintenance manager Sylvain Fargo, this incredible machine never fails to impress. The first time when I see it, the first word was wow. And it's still wow when I see it. This aircraft was part of what we could call a jump uh, in the uh, aeronautic industry. New technologies required from us to train our mechanics, our engineers. So it's quite a step through future. The A380 is a colossal machine that's the result of centuries of innovation. Man has been trying to fly like a bird for quite some time. But flight isn't as easy as it looks. 11th century Benedictine monk Elmar reportedly strapped wings to his back and launched himself off Malmesbury Abbey. But he glided out of control 
coming to a painful landing. And in 18th century Paris, the Montgolfier brothers discovered that hot air could make a paper bag rise. This led them to build a hot air balloon, making history with the first ever lighter than air manned flight. Oh, très bien, magnifique. <laughs> but their design had a few drawbacks. To build a flying machine heavier than air that can take off and remain airborne, engineers would need to figure out a way to harness the forces of nature. And in 1804, British scientist Sir George Cayley finally unlocked the mystery of flight, earning him the title, the father of aeronautics. Cayley discovered that while in flight, a bird's wing has a curved shape. This is now known as an aerofoil. Air passing over the curved surface speeds up, losing pressure. The pressure of the undisturbed air below remains high. This creates upward force. By turning the aerofoil upside down, aerospace engineer Dr. Ben Evans can demonstrate how Cayley's shape successfully conquered the forces of gravity. Now, in this experiment, on one side, we've got weights representing gravity, the force that needs to be overcome. And on the other end, an aerofoil. And as this spins, the arm goes level. The air passes over the aerofoil and pulls it down to counteract gravity, which is what lift is trying to do in an aircraft. In 1853, at the age of 79, Cayley put these ideas into practice when he launched the world's first heavier-than-air manned glider. Sir George Cayley had made the impossible possible. <laughs> Cayley's achievements inspired generations of aerospace engineers to reach for the skies. By doing some very simple experiments, he managed to show what allows a wing to generate lift, just like the wing of this glider that is allowing us to hang here in the skies. Without George Cayley's innovative wing design, the gargantuan Airbus A380 wouldn't make it off the ground. When you see this aircraft, it's so huge, you can say, but impossible that this big thing is going to fly. No way. But in fact, it's only aerodynamics. The A380's wings apply the same principles that Cayley exploited, but on an enormous scale. With an almost 265-foot span and a surface area of 9,095 square feet, they're big enough to park 20 of Cayley's gliders on top. But engineers needed some serious power in order to get the world's largest passenger plane airborne. So they looked to a revolutionary design from the past. to produce more impossible engineering. In a supersized hangar in Paris, an Airbus A380 is being serviced. Technician Charlie Jackson is getting up close and personal with this engineering masterpiece. As this aircraft is taking off down the runway and generating speed, 
the tips of the wings actually will raise up, which is a sign that the wing is generating the lift that it's going to need to carry such a large aircraft into flight. Creating a wing big enough to generate lift, but small enough to minimize drag, is an engineering conundrum. On the A380, special high lift devices, slats on the front and flaps on the back, allow the wings to increase in size and curve depending on how much lift is needed. But the wings also keep the A380 airborne in a more surprising way. The inside of these wings is the fuel which you need to complete your flight. The plane has 11 fuel tanks, five in each wing and one in the tail. Fuel is stored in the inner tanks to reduce weight at the wingtips, but after takeoff, it's pumped to tanks across the whole wing. Throughout the flight, the system constantly adjusts the fuel to maintain the center of gravity. This wing is the product of good design. If it hadn't been that way, it just wouldn't be practical to make an aircraft that size. Well-designed wings aren't enough to keep this massive plane in the air. Creating engines powerful enough to lift a 369-ton aircraft, along with 200 tons of passengers, fuel, and cargo, almost two and a half miles into the sky is a daunting task. The engines are one of the most important components on this plane. It's like the heart. If it doesn't beat, the body doesn't live. Powering the A380 would be impossible without the brilliant work of past engineers. By the late 1800s, aerospace engineers recognized that power and thrust were needed to fly. In 1874, Frenchman Félix de Temple attached a steam engine to a monoplane. Et voila! But the engine was too heavy. And in 1903, American professor Samuel Langley tried using a giant catapult. But the takeoff didn't quite go as planned. Luckily, two siblings from Dayton, Ohio, were about to make one of aviation's most significant breakthroughs. In December 1903, Wilbur and Orville Wright launched the maiden flight of the Wright Flyer. Two propellers driven by a piston engine gave the plane enough thrust to take to the air. Even though the flight only lasted 12 seconds, covering just over 100 feet, it was the first controlled powered flight and is recognized as the birth of modern aviation. But getting a plane more than 1,500 times heavier than the Wright Flyer Airborne would take an incredible engineering breakthrough. Through the late 1930s, piston engine propeller planes were the aviation standard. They were limited in range, speed, and altitude. However, a radical engineering innovation was on the horizon. What an incredible sensation! Dr. Ben Evans is experiencing firsthand the power of Britain's first fighter jet, the Gloucester Meteor. It's powered by the first ever jet engine. which was invented by British engineer Frank Whittle.